Tracy Walker Art. Uh, a while ago I did a video where I tested metallic watercolors and I actually tested this brand um, called Starry Colors and they are called Kuretake Gombi watercolor metallic watercolors. And I believe that these are the Japanese version of watercolors. And I always kind of felt when using them that there was a little bit of a gelatin feel to them. So they weren't really permanent. You could reactivate them. There was also a smell. They worked great on top of things, but I was wondering if I could paint over things. So I got a different set. These are made in Germany instead of in Japan. So I'm wondering if there's something different about the base or the binder and maybe if it's less gelatinous or gelatin-like. Um, so we're going to be using, trying these out. They are called Colero Pearl Colors, handmade in Germany. And they have uh, a very similar color palette to the previous ones. They even come in kind of similar packaging. But I'm curious to see how, how these work. So let's find out. Also, you may notice there's a giant mess behind me. Let's pretend like that's not happening. I've got another project for some of my jewelry going on behind me, and I have some things that need to dry before I can move them, um, which should be in a few minutes so that I can go ahead and test out these watercolors. Let's get going. Kuretake Gonzai Tombi watercolors that I purchased from Amazon were about $14. Let's see how the new ones do. These are Colero Pearl Colors, and they were about $21 from Amazon, so hopefully they perform better. So I was a little worried because the uh, each one of the colors was a little out of place after shipping, so I waited to open these up, and they're definitely a little bit askew. But I do like that they come in this plastic case. That's actually really nice. The uh, other watercolors just had kind of a cardboard case to them that I think is gonna quickly get destroyed. So let's see these things pop right back on. So that's nice. And then it actually leaves like a nice little space where you could put a paintbrush so you could take these on the go if you were going to be painting just with metallics. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so my plan for testing these is going to be similar to the previous ones. I'm going to see how well they perform dry, if I need to activate them, and for how long, if I do need to do that. I'll see how they are playing on the paper. I'll put them over some pigment so we can see, and I'll try them on a black background. And then I'm going to add a new step where I want to try to reactivate the colors to see if they're more permanent than the other colors are. So my testing of this shows that with a little brush, um, water on the brush, straight into the dry pan, it doesn't seem to produce much of anything. So these do look like they're going to perform more like normal watercolors, and I will need to activate them. I'll go ahead and put a few drops of water on each one of these and let them set while I label each one of the areas so that I know where I'm working. Okay, so now that they have sit, sat for probably 10-15 seconds, um, I can definitely get some of the pigment up onto the brush, and it really kind of moves around in the pan, and the brush is quite saturated, so let's see how the silver performs. You can't see it from this distance, but there's definitely a shimmer and a shine. Let's see if I can give you a better look at that. It's very light in pigment, um, but it is really shiny, and that doesn't show up too well on the camera. Hopefully we'll be able to get a better idea of that um, with the other colors. This is the lightest gold color, and again, it saturates the brush nicely after it sat there, and you can already tell this has a lot more pigment. Um, not a ton, but a lot more than the silver does. Okay, so with the uh, camera better focusing, you can actually see a little bit of the shimmer from both of those colors. We'll go ahead and test all of these across and see how well each of them do.
Overall, they all feel pretty good. They feel actually very similar to the, the Kurataki ones that I had previously ordered. So um, I'm curious to see how well they hold up kind of being a, a layered layer. Maybe metallic watercolors just aren't made for that. And they do have a beautiful shine. And just like the previous one, the middle gold is actually the most pigmented of all the gold. I also went ahead and um, put a little more water and let them soak for uh, probably another 30 seconds just to see if I could get some more pigment out of them. And that actually turned out to be the case. After they had soaked for a while, um, it really seemed to allow more of the pigment and more of kind of the metal sparkles to be picked up by the brush. So that's good to know. If you're gonna use these, make sure you let them soak really well before you start using them. These watercolors do have a beautiful shimmer to them, especially the Arabic gold. Um, and I really like the Inca gold too. It's it's almost kind of like a copper, but not. It's still gold gold. Um, they're just really pretty. My next step is to see how much um, they cover, kind of how pigmented they are and how much coverage they have. So since you've already seen how they work through the uh, power of video editing, that's what they look like over a dark color. Also through the uh, power of video editing, let's go back and just see how these apply and just look how beautiful that is. Since I already tested these over an archival ink that shouldn't run, I wanted to see how well they did over watercolor. So that's what we'll do next. To give them a fair shot, I made sure to make sure the watercolor was really dry and then went ahead and painted over and it doesn't seem to have much of any issue doing exactly that. Here's a quick close-up. Uh, it goes over well and doesn't smudge the watercolor. Again, another close-up of just how pretty this paint is kind of as you lay it down and it shimmers. Our final test will be just to see what they look like on black, so I've made some uh, Sharpie boxes uh, because I think that metallic watercolors just look stunning on black. Because I know you're busy, let's skip to the end and see what they look like. They really are beautiful, um, and especially over that black, that, that middle gold one just is stunning. So pretty happy with those. Uh, the only thing is, is they really do perform basically the same as the Kurataki. You can see I smudged them and they really easily just, those were completely dry, but with a little water color, just a little water, they just reactivated. I was able to kind of carefully put some watercolor over the tops and it didn't seem to smudge them too much, but you wouldn't want to work with the brushes too much. Overall, um, they also don't smell like the Kurataki. The Kurataki ones, they smell like gelatin if you've ever um, made anything with gelatin in it. Uh, and the other ones don't, so... I don't know, kind of a toss-up if, if what you want to do. The, other, the Kurataki ones are cheaper, so I guess it's up to you. Also, just like the Kurataki ones, they make your water beautiful. Check that out. Thank you so much for watching today. If you'd like more videos like this, please subscribe.